Kinko leaves falling in the tenderloin. The golden leaves form fan-shaped piles on the sidewalk while the woman sleeps hugged to the pavement and the law students drive by. I am followed half a block by a sad man begging for silver as golden leaves blow in a semicircle from the day after Christmas wind at the edges of the tenderloin and in its heart. Hate Ashbury Street Fair. On the daily street corner, the sellers of life showing their hands and their cards, selling the long scarves of their existence, the air they breathe. Clowns settling on the edges of the park in tents of pine. The daily street fair tallies its accounts, noting how blood gets more credit than hunger. The daily street fair applauds thick with beads of rain and closes with a layer of cold ice not often found in these parts. Wall dancers. We have to face into the sun to see the wall dancers stand on a mural, recreate the fire in the mission that burned down the Gartland Hotel. The dancers jump off the top of the building attached to ropes but appearing to walk in the sky. The crowd watches, most are young. They don't remember the hole in the ground with the large graffiti pictures of landlords as rats. The dancers walk against a painted balcony with buckets of roses for sale, the red and gold of the flames reaching up to their feet. The sun heats our foreheads. The hallways had single women with children, tamales makers, and a lady who sold roses in the taquerias. Home can be a hard dance on hot and cold asphalt. Prostitutes and addicts walk the alleys. The sidewalks had old clothes and lives for sale. Some were hanging by a wire. Fourteen died in the fire. Lip flowers, the char lingers in the throat. Who set the fire? Our faces cupped with our hands. The bright sun puts all in shadow. No roads. With the roads blocked, how will I work? With knocking and searching, how will I sing? With a house with no walls, how can I cook tonight and tomorrow? In a windowless cell, how will I play the violin? And with a wall encircling my land, can my thoughts fly like birds over the barbed wire? I did nothing. How can I work? How can I sing? Aunt Hannah without the map designating each grave went east, too far east along a creek. The headstones became thin white crosses, some leaning rickety, some straight up, sticks together in one plot. No names or dates, just the workers who built what? A railroad? A house? A group of Irish workers in a corner of Waldheim down along the creek, with birds flying overhead and mud on our shoes. <laughs> Beside the dog, the father and his little boy eat lunch in the China Walk booth beneath the pictured ear of the dog. The father playfully throws a ball to the dog in a field where families walk in the sunlight. The five-year-old learns his reading and writing and sits on his father's lap. The dog looks up. She is friendly and licks the son's hand. Another child who lived down the street has a memorial adorned with flowers each year where a car hit that spirit. The child beside the dog's image will live to run in the park with a kite will curl up now next to his father and will eat chow mein as his father shows him how to use chopsticks. See the happy dog, the father says to his son. <laughs> In 
ginkgos. There was a row of ginkgo trees on Elizabeth Road. She never knew who planted them there. The leaves, beautiful green fans etched with brown and touches of yellow, Asian trees. The little girl walks past them on a street in New York State, going to Roosevelt Elementary School. Math, history, geography, female trees, the fallen leaves pressed into her souls like etchings, like ink drawings in art class. The soft, spongy fruit crushed all over the ground, pink ovals, sweet and rotten smelling, so that her heels needed to be washed and cleaned. Loose newspaper pages blown over the fans, headlines the last whiffs of Hiroshima and the Korean War. High school begins with one paragraph on Vietnam, chemistry, Chinese emperors, Brown versus Board of Education. College ends with my life. Away from the ginkgo trees at 19, she runs in the DC streets, her feet pounding in marches past the Japanese cherry trees, drifting through candlelight vigils, genocide, Agent Orange, napalm, anthropology, sociology, economics, Mao and Ho Chi Minh. When she returns from college on her street again, the ginkgos are gone. A trim lawn remains. A new neighbor cut the ginkgos down. The trees, an invisible memory. Now she lives in San Francisco. The fog drapes the ocean as she grows middle-aged. Food dogs in front of little Saigon. Chinese spoken on buses. On the way to Haight Street, she finds three ginkgo trees without the sticky fruit, sees the ginkgo leaves rise like butterflies, feels like she's returning home, walking down Elizabeth Road, past a row of ginkgos waiting for her, welcoming her.